Hello everyone, welcome to my Batman Arkham Asylum, hard difficulty, no damage walkthrough. This is going to be the entirety of the pump access control room area, and this is where the game's diminished quality really shows, because this last 20% of the game, starting from here up until the end of the game, is the worst part of Batman Arkham Asylum. This is really the point where I just stop enjoying this game entirely. I mean, I didn't know this previously in my first couple of playthroughs, but, you know, where I am right now as a gamer, I can't enjoy this section for what it is. The combat encounters coming up represent the developers just losing all common sense, and they design combat encounters that just aren't befitting for the kind of fundamental framework that they've set up with the gameplay format. It's so pathetic. It's really pathetic. And just the number of strategies I had to implement for these sequences that are so anti-Batman and they involve the use of the Ultra Bat Claw and there's no combo building whatsoever and I'm having to restrict myself in combat so much because of the inclusion of Titan Henchmen which already don't complement the fundamental framework of combat that they've set up for this game because the whole system involved with using the Batarang on them and then just getting them to smash into a wall and then hitting them three times and then you get no range on your melee attacks because for whatever reason you can't do long range melee attacks on Titan Henchmen you have to get in so close to them so that your punches actually register because they don't actually complement the the paired animation system involved for some reason you have to use the hitbox based system of combat in order to actually get close to them and actually initiate your strike attacks because Batman never chooses to do his long range melee in order to get to the Titan henchman and the Titan henchman just prevents you from building any combo and you're forced to limit your options in combat because they can hit you during animations that the normal henchman can't hit you in like in the normal takedown animations or in throw animations or in all these other animations that are supposed to turn off the enemy AI and give you a bit of iframes like, the, the gameplay just falls apart to a degree where you really have to wonder if they even play-tested anything in this last 20% of the game. It's just so bad. There's nothing that complements the free-flow nature. You're getting betrayed by the mechanics constantly. You're forced to limit your options in combat. You have enemy types that don't complement the free-flow nature. And it feels like the developers just want you to spam the ultra bat call like crazy and just finish off enemies on the ground. Or you, you want to use the, the multi batarang on enemies, but even then, Batman prioritizes the wrong guys. And the amount of times I'm trying to use the multi batarang in combat, and Batman misses the closest enemy, and he gets a hit on, on me. So frustrating. And the Ultra Bat Claw is still a risk to take, because during the entire animation of pulling enemies with the Bat Claw, the enemies can attack you, and there's no cancelling out of that animation. So, like... Again, there's just a level of restriction involved in your combat options in a combat system that's already as restricted as it is. Like, you already have very little options in combat, but to restrict it even more because of poor designs, what do you do? It's so shit. It's so fucking shit. I just, I don't know why they made this kind of mistake. It makes no sense. Like, the rest of the game, there were definitely problems present with the combat systems, but you didn't notice that as much because the encounters were kind of balanced. But they throw all sense of balance out the window with these later combat encounters in this last 20% of the game. And it just leads to a clusterfuck of bad gameplay and just really stupid strategies that I'm having to implement. And I'm having to just game the system, I'm having to exploit holes in the designs, I'm having to take advantage of designs that the developers probably want you to use, but they don't properly convey it in the actual gameplay. It's just not a game at this point, it's really bad. And it hasn't started yet, like, we, we've just entered the pump control room, but this is not where the, the big combat encounter happens yet. It happens after some minor combat encounters and one priority sequence, which is actually the last priority sequence of the game. And those sequences are fun, but you completely forget about them when you're doing the, the stupid combat encounter, and it takes such a long time for me to get any consistency with this combat encounter coming up because of how fundamentally broken it is. Now, just imagine that this game had some kind of no-hit difficulty where if you take one hit, you die. That's how frustrating the combat encounter would be, and then you have to sit through that dead scene every time of Joker mocking you, and you have to sit through a loading screen, then you have to get back into the shitty combat encounter. 
It's just, it's bad. And the thing is, is that the Batman Arkham games generally do a great job at conveying a gameplay format that feels befitting for the whole idea of no damage, which is why I'm trying to do no damage, because I'm trying to showcase that this game is designed for no damage. But then you have these holes in the designs, and then you have sections like the last 20% of Batman Arkham Asylum, where all those holes are amplified further, that just feels so anti-Batman and anti-no damage and just anti-good designs that it's just a joke. It's a fucking joke. And it's it's something that really pisses me off about Batman Arkham Asylum more so than with other parts of the Arkham games. Because like in Arkham City and Arkham Origins and in Arkham Knight, I mean, then again with the Batmobile sequences and some of the Batmobile sequences in Batman Arkham Knight are pretty stupid. And then you have some of the uh, open world stuff that is occurring in those games that can interfere with your progression into the main story. Like when you have th those things like that, that are so uh, anti no damage, they, they really feel bad and they really go against the whole idea of like good designs but you know i notice a lot more in batman arkham asylum than i do in the later games because this is the first game and therefore they were still trying to refine the combat systems but you know like i, I get that this is the first game but even still though they should have had the common sense necessary to play back the last 20 percent of this game and really contemplate that what they have designed with these combat scenarios with the way they've given certain enemy types and with the way they've designed the titan henchmen it's not good. It just isn't good at all. And it feels like you're playing a broken experience in this last 20% of the game. And it's really bad. It is really shit. And it just completely mars a game that could have been so much better. And so many people laud this game as being one of the best games ever made. But I don't agree with it, really. Because this last 20% of the game really seals this game's place. It's just being, like... A, a decent game, and I say a decent game because of the fact that the last 20% is shit. It's really bad. But I need to pause in this tangent right now because we have a Predator Encounter. This is the final Predator Encounter of the game, and for the final Predator Encounter, it's actually very simple. I take out that guy. Like I, I do a very um, baller strategy of remaining crouched and just moving past these enemies, like the, the first three enemies that you can see, and I just go and take out that guy with a silent takedown, and then I plant explosive gel next to him, and I'm going to use Explosive Gel with the wall right over there in order to instantly take out one of the enemies that will come on the stairs. At times, you'll get two enemies coming down the stairs, and that'll be great if you can get this combat sequence done quickly, but it doesn't matter. So he's coming. I'm going to instantly take him out, and I'm going to take out these guys right over here. And look, very simple. And then this guy, he chooses to either go into cover or he chooses to walk around a lot. If he goes into cover, this is great because I can instantly floor him with a batarang. If he's not in cover, that's fine. You just got to wait him out a little bit. But then we have these last two enemies, and these last two enemies don't do anything. They just sit there, just waiting for their turn to actually come out and investigate. They're, they're waiting for you to take out the other enemies, so that they can get the chance to investigate where you are. And don't do what I did just then. Don't use the Sonic Shock Batarang. I, I decided to use it just for a change of pace. But this guy's a little delayed when coming out of that control room if you use the Sonic Shock Batarang. And you'll see right here, Joker's repeating his dialogue twice for actually telling this henchman to investigate an unconscious body. But he's not actually fulfilling his programming that he's supposed to. He's just walking around normally as if he's already seen the body. But it doesn't matter because I'm going to be able to pull him off with the Bat Claw. And he's done. Very, very simple. It's a very like, a consistent strategy. It works every single time. There's no problems with this section whatsoever. It's a lot easier than the intensive treatment one, that's for sure. But returning to my tangent on the really shit combat encounter coming up. What you're going to be seeing with this uh, strategy I'm going to showcase for the really shit combat encounter coming up, it's actually going to be a different recording. This is a recording of gameplay that I got after I recorded this walkthrough fully. So my old gameplay, I've completely replaced with the new gameplay because I still have the same upgrades, I still have the same abilities. It's just my strategy is different. And it doesn't change my approach to the other sections. It, it's perfectly okay to put in this new gameplay. And I'm glad I got this new gameplay because I've learned some new things with the really shit combat encounter coming up. So there's actually uh, Shinji Mikami designs put in place with this section. And what I mean is, in these kind of combat encounters where you have uh, a lot of enemies coming, uh, you can actually pause the spawn in the sequence by only taking out a certain number of enemies and then leaving a couple of enemies standing. And in this case, if you leave two normal henchmen standing alongside the Titan henchmen, 
the spawn will be paused. The, the enemies that are supposed to spawn from the elevators will be paused, and this is good. And also, uh, right here, this is important. I'm going to showcase the explosive jail trick for dealing with Titan henchmen very quickly. So, you'll want to stun this guy, do the 3-8 combo, and then blow up the explosive gel. And I'm going to uh, attack him, and I'm going to place the explosive gel on the ground very quickly before he has a chance to hit me with his ground takedown right over here. So I'm just going to roll away. Like You'd be amazed at how lenient the iframes are on that animation that I just did. But I'm going to use the back claw twice, and I'm going to take out two enemies. Luckily for me, one of the enemies hits the uh, electric fence, but I need to take out enough enemies that there's only three enemies remaining. And this is where uh, stupidity is going to happen, because for some reason, when you're in this general area, like inside the elevator shaft, the programming is messed up with these enemies, uh, specifically with the Titan henchman, because there are times where he will do his charge attack at close range, and it's impossible to avoid, and you can't evade over them when they do the charge attack, which is bullshit. Because the number of times that they do the charge attack in situations where you're trapped and you need to evade over them, it's bullshit. It's really bullshit. And also, uh, right there, I put Explosive Gel to stop that from happening. I put Explosive Gel on the ground to stop this guy from actually doing oh, his uh, charge attack. Because if he decides to do his charge attack at close range, I'm fucked. But the Explosive Gel stops that. Because the Explosive Gel is a guaranteed stun on this guy, and you will put him into a state where you can punish him with three melee attacks. And also, you might have noticed some moments where I wasn't doing the last hit on the 3-8 combo. It, it's because I, I, I discovered something interesting. It seems like uh, if you do an incomplete combo on the Titan Henchman, you're able to stack additional hits on this guy. But I, I don't know when he actually chooses to recover from the stun state if you choose to do it like that. So don't risk it too much. And plus you have the other enemies uh, supporting him and they can be a problem. But... When you're looking at this recording right now, it looks like it's not so awkward, right? But believe me, it is awkward. This is a lot harder than you think to implement, because having to juggle between the normal henchmen and the titan henchmen is obnoxious, and then having those programming errors be apparent when you're inside the elevator shaft, it's obnoxious. It's really obnoxious. And th like I said, the gameplay really falls apart. Even when I'm doing this method, the gameplay still falls apart. And he, this guy is so slow to do his charge attack at times. Like, did you see that just then? He walked a little bit and then he was, like, doing his charge attack. Well, at times he doesn't do that. At times he'll just walk towards you, not trying to do any attack animation. And then the moment he recognizes your hitbox, he'll just feign you out and you'll go for a body on the ground rather than actually going for you and doing the charge attack, which is what you'd expect. So that just leads to a lot of confusion, which can mess up the strategy. And I, I do have a uh, footage saved of the awkward moments where I'm trying to implement the strategy. But I, I didn't choose to include it because uh, I, I don't think it's really like bloopers worth showing. But now that he's gone, we can actually engage in the normal free flow gameplay. You see how great this combat encounter is when you're not dealing with stupid titan henchmen just interfering with the proper gameplay format? Like, wh why would you put in an enemy type that does not fall within the framework of this free flow combat? It makes no sense. And I'm so glad they fixed this in Batman Arkham City. And the, the things you can do with the Titan Henchmen and Batman Arkham City to really get them out of the way, like, the Titan Henchmen serve more as really easy enemies to get rid of that actually complement the fundamental framework of gameplay, rather than just nuisances like they are in Batman Arkham Asylum. And unlike in Batman Arkham City, Batman's normal attacks can actually, like, give him a lot of range. Like, he, he does long-range melee attacks on the Titan Henchmen, and he does long-range stuns as well on the Titan Henchmen, because the Titan Henchmen are actually integrated into the free flow combat intelligently. So there aren't any moments where Batman just chooses to strike at thin air, even though you're telling him to go in the direction of the Titan Henchmen, and he just refuses to do his long-range melee. He does his long-range melee on the Titan Henchmen, and it's wonderful. And the Titan Henchman gets stunned by a single cape stun, and then you follow up with additional cape stuns, and then you can stun them, and then ride them and do a beatdown on them. And then when they throw you off, you can do the quick fire explosive gel technique, and if you have focus mode enabled uh, as part of the upgrades, you can get a greater radius established with your explosive gel, and hit the Titan Henchman in order to stun them, and then reinitiate the beatdown, and then ride them again. Like, it's so cool! And then you have options with the Titan Charge, but the Titan Charge is so reliable, and you want to do the Titan Charge at the end of every riding animation, so that by the time they knock you off, you're far away from enemies, so you can initiate the explosive gel with safety. Like, it's so cool! Like, how could they not favor such a model with Arkham Asylum? And it, it felt like they were brain dead when designing the Titan Henchman on Batman Arkham Asylum. And if you see the, the footage that I have of all the awkward moments where the, the gameplay just fucks me so much, it's so bad. 
And you'll definitely agree with me that the Titan henchmen are the worst enemy types in this game, and that this last 20% of the game is shit. And does it get better? No, it doesn't, because we now have to go with the Poison Ivy to do her boss fight, but that's reserved for the next video. And her boss fight is the worst boss fight on this game, because once again, it's another combat scenario where they're putting a, a focus on anti-free-flow gameplay, and then you have the, the second phase of her boss fight, and her second phase is shit. Like, the, the first phase is decent, but her vine move, when she's initiating the, the vines on the ground, it can be very bullshit, because she, she at times can do the vine move in situations where you literally cannot avoid it, and it's so fucking bullshit. It's just a great example of the developers not comprehending scenarios where she can be very bullshit with her vine attacks. It's like what um, new Capcom did with Moreau, where Moreau has access to moves that he can do in situations that you physically cannot avoid, and it's a soul of trash. And then in the second phase, when she gains access to those hypnotized policemen, and they're constantly uh, getting in the way, and you know, they're throwing your attention off from Ivy, and then they have other shit designs with them, and you know, like Batman's very slow in combat, and you can't engage in combat with them, because if you do, you'll get fucked by the vines. Like, you have, again, another situation where you have free-flow combat and anti-free-flow combat just put into the mix together, and it's just a clusterfuck mess of a boss fight, and it's so bad. And you have those situations where you're trying to avoid Ivy's vines by evading, but Batman does the wrong evade animation because he chooses to do the evade animation where he's trying to jump over an enemy's head rather than doing the, uh, the long-range evade animation. And he gets caught in an unfair situation. It's so trash. It's so fucking trash. And it's just... I, I need to talk more about this in the next part of this video. But that is the end of this area. Stay tuned for the future parts. Thank you all for watching, and you take care now. Fucking game! This is retarded.